100 hours, and Russia reinforces its Mediterranean fleet. AFBN News, compiled from commercial and military news agencies, with Army Specialist Bob Lawrence. Good evening. The Soviet Union is reinforcing its Mediterranean fleet in the strategic Mediterranean area. Allied diplomatic sources say Russia has quietly massed 26 surface vessels and several submarines in the area. Defense sources also think Soviet ships and planes are attempting to shadow five French-built gunboats reported heading for Israel. The gunboats, with missile-carrying capability, could drastically alter Arab-Israeli naval balance in the eastern Mediterranean. Russian ships are reported spreading across the Mediterranean, continuing surveillance on the American 6th Fleet. The Soviet Union moved much of its fleet out of the same area only two months ago, but experts say it wants to keep its Mediterranean sphere of influence, and it wants the U.S. to clear out of the area. Those five Israeli manned gunboats traveling through the Mediterranean from the French port of Cherbourg should arrive in Israel today or later this evening. That's the expectation of some Israelis. Indications are the missile launching boats passed south of the Greek island of Crete early this morning. South Africans have been put on notice against any attempt to speculate in gold. This came when the U.S. and its major trading partners announced agreement on a $35 an ounce floor for newly mined South African gold. The action came through the International Monetary Fund and applies only to gold mined in South Africa. Hot indications are it will affect some, or effectively set a floor for the entire free market gold price at $35 per ounce. Two weeks of work and rest confront President Nixon at the Western White House. High on the business side of the President's day at San Clemente, California, the preparation of the State of the Union address he'll deliver to Congress in January. Another assignment is a budget message that will follow his congressional speech. The chief executive appeared in good humor as he arrived in California today from the nation's capital. Some 3,000 persons turned out at the airport to greet him. Regarding the president's passage earlier today of the massive tax reform bill, Mr. Nixon had some comments on the whys and wherefores of his passage. We got a report on this from Hal Walker. With the Congress in year-end adjournment, Mr. Nixon performed solo at the tax reform bill signing ceremony today, avoiding the potential embarrassment of having to invite the congressional Democrats who put into the tax bill more relief and less revenue than he had asked for. A critical moment for this legislation came after the Senate had passed a totally irresponsible bill that would have led to a sharp increase in the cost of living for every family in America. In a letter to the leaders of the Congress, I left no doubt that I would veto this bill. As a result, when members of the Congress met in to work out the differences between the Senate and House bills, the bill that came out of that conference was over $6 billion less inflationary for the next fiscal year than the bill that had passed the Senate. Seldom is any piece of major legislation fully satisfactory to a president. And this bill is surely no exception. I have signed it because I believe that on balance it is a necessary beginning in the process of making our tax system as possible to the taxpayer. Mr. Nixon also pledged that he will submit a balanced federal budget for next year and will take whatever action is necessary to do so. He did not specify what that action will be, leaving open both options of new taxes and reduced expenditures. During his desk of other pending matters, Mr. Nixon then signed into law the Coal Mine Health and Safety Act of 1969 and a $69 billion defense appropriations measure. He and Mrs. Nixon climbed aboard Air Force One for California, leaving behind a cold and wet capital city. Hal Walker, CBS News, the White House. Vice President Agnew and Philippine President Marcos passing mutual compliments have conferred today in Manila. Mr. Agnew has left Manila to visit a Rice Research Institute and fly over the Bataan and Corregidor battlefield areas. And in the war in Vietnam, 1st Air Cav Division gunships and soldiers aided by tactical airstrikes and artillery accounted for 61 enemy killed yesterday in the action in three corps. Two Americans were killed, two wounded in those clashes. Vietnamese paratroopers killed 38 soldiers in an engagement some 83 miles above Saigon. Friendly losses in that action were termed moderate. To the hour, that's the MPN News.
AFBN News compiled from commercial and military news agencies with Army Specialist Bob Lawrence.
Texas millionaire Ross Perot has run into another snag in his efforts to get tons of jet parcels to U.S. prisoners of war in North Vietnam. Perot is in Copenhagen hoping to gain permission from the Soviets to fly a jetliner full of parcels to Moscow where they could be mailed on to North Vietnam. And always said the parcels must be in the mail by tonight at midnight. And today, with the deadline approaching, the Soviets asked Perot to prove the U.S. government has no objection to this private mercy flight for prisoners of war held by Hanoi. To the hour, that's AFBN News. AFBN News, compiled from commercial and military news agencies, with Army Specialist Bob Lawrence. <laughs> Radio 54 AM, 99.9 .9 FM, AFBN Saigon. Are you getting short? Well, if you are, don't forget your whole baggage. If you pack your own shipment, you'll need six copies of your orders. If the whole baggage people pack it, you'll need seven copies. And if you're making an intertheater transfer, 11 copies. By the way, whole baggage sections in country are called personal property branches. But the mission is still the same. At 0300 hours, a stiff charge of new censorship at AFVN. AFVN News compiled from commercial and military news agencies with Army Specialist Jim Allingham. Good morning. According to the Associated Press, a television newscaster on the American Forces Vietnam Network in Saigon charged over the air late last night that a broadcaster on the network, and we quote, is not free to tell the truth, unquote. The newscaster, 27-year-old Specialist 5 Robert Lawrence of Atlanta, Georgia, made the accusation at the end of his 11 p.m. broadcast. As in the newsman, and we quote, Specialist Lawrence said, I am dedicated to giving the public the news and events worldwide and on the local level. I am pledged to tell the truth at all times, and I will always tell the truth, either in the military or as a civilian. In the military in Vietnam, I have found that a newscaster at AFVN is not free to tell the truth, and in essence, to tell it like it is, unquote. Specialist Lawrence said the Military Assistance Command in Vietnam, the overseer of all American forces in the country, and we quote again, has seen to it that all those newscasters who are dedicated to their work are sent away to other areas, in some cases off the air completely, unquote. A spokesman said the U.S. command would have no immediate comment. He said the command was attempting to determine exactly what was said and that a statement probably would be made later. That story from the Associated Press. An Army investigating team is poking through the hamlet at My Lai in Vietnam to see if Army officers covered up an alleged massacre of civilians by American troops. The team is led by Lieutenant General William Pierce and made a house-to-house -house search for evidence. Yeah, this is the American Forces Vietnam Network. It's four minutes past five o'clock. AFBN News, compiled from commercial and military news agencies with Army Specialist Jim Allingham. Good morning. Let's break a few moments here at halftime in our game between the Dallas Cowboys and the Los Angeles Rams to bring you up to date on some of the stories happening in today's news. According to the Associated Press, an American soldier broadcasting on the American Forces Vietnam Network has charged over the air in a newscast that he and others are not free to tell the truth. The 27-year-old newscaster, Specialist 5 Robert Lawrence of Atlanta, Georgia, said the Military Assistance Command has, in his words, seen to it that all those newscasters who are dedicated to their work are sent away to other areas, in some cases off the air completely. Lawrence said one soldier who charged there was censorship on the military network is now doing menial tasks in the record library on the FM station. That another broadcaster was sent up country and taken off the air completely. We have been suppressed, Lawrence said, and I'm probably in trouble for telling you the truth. A spokesman said the U.S. command would have no immediate comment, but a statement would probably be made later. That from the Associated Press. An Army investigating team headed by Lieutenant General William Pierce inspected the ruins of Mi Lai Hamlet yesterday. The team is seeking information. 
of the stories highlighting today's news. An American soldier broadcasting on the American Forces Vietnam Network here in Saigon has charged over the air in a newscast that he and others are not free to tell the truth. The 27-year-old newscaster, Specialist 5 Bob Barnes of Atlanta, Georgia, said the Military Assistance Command has, in his words, seen to it that all those newscasters who are dedicated to their work are sent away to other areas, in some cases off the air completely. A spokesman said the U.S. Command would have no immediate comment, but the statement would probably come later. And in Birmingham, Alabama, a Negro soldier killed in Vietnam last July is being reinterred in a previously all-white cemetery. PFC Bill Terry's mother and 16-year-old wife obtained a court order to bury him in a burial plot near his boyhood hall. A brief service was planned for midday after the co a coffin, that is, was removed from the all-Negro Shadow Lawn Cemetery. We go back to the AFRTS Sports Department in Washington for more halftime commentary in the playoff bowl game between the Dallas Cowboys and the Los Angeles Rams with the score Los Angeles 14, Dallas nothing. Uh, really a mess here now. Uh, and looking at... A stiff charge of news censorship here in the Republic. A report from ABC newsman John Maher in New York. An American GI newsman in Saigon says the news in Saigon is being censored. Specialist Robert Lawrence of Atlanta, Georgia, went on the air tonight, Saigon time, to say that the Armed Forces Network in Vietnam is not free to tell the truth. Lawrence cited three other GI newscasters in Vietnam whom he said had been downgraded for opposing news censorship. So far, no comment from the U.S. command in Saigon on Lawrence's charge of censorship. That report from ABC Newsman John Maher. Chief negotiator of the Paris Peace Talks, Ambassador Pham Dang Lam, left for Saigon today. It said he'll have a routine discussion with his government before returning to Paris in about 10 days. Vice President Agnew was in Thailand on the latest stop on his Asian tour. CBS News correspondent Bruce Morton reports from Bangkok. Vice President Stuart Agnew arrived in Bangkok from Taipei today and did a number of things he has done before. He listened to two national anthems at the airport and reviewed Brazilian jetliner, which was grounded in Lima, Peru for 27 hours with a dead battery, has now landed in Panama for refueling before flying on to Cuba. Peruvian officials had a new battery flown in so that the plane could take off. 28 others are aboard the hijacked plane. The hijackers say they will take the two children of a friend who is jailed in Brazil to Cuba and then return to Brazil. The four men and one woman kept 21 passengers and seven crew members at bay with guns during the entire stopover in Peru. New action in the Middle East, a new Israeli raid into Lebanese territory. CBS newsman Gerald Miller reports from Tel Aviv. An Israeli commando unit moved across the Lebanese border early this morning in a quick reprisal raid for the New Year's Day kidnapping of a Jewish waterman. Vietnam Radio in South Vietnam. We have heard this newscast by Jim Allingham. According to the Associated Press, a television newscaster on the American Forces Vietnam Network in Saigon charged over the air late last night that a broadcaster on the network and we quote, is not free to tell the truth, unquote. The newscaster, 27-year-old Specialist 5 Robert Lawrence of Atlanta, Georgia, made the accusation at the end of his 11 p.m. broadcast. As the news went out and quote, Specialist Lawrence said, I am dedicated to giving the public the news and events worldwide and on the local level. I am pledged to tell the truth at all times, and I will always tell the truth, either in the military or as a civilian. In the military in Vietnam, I have found that a newscaster at AFDN is not free to tell the truth, and in efforts to tell it like it is, unquote. Specialist Lawrence said the Military Assistance Command in Vietnam, the overseer of all American forces in the country, and we vote again, has seen to it that all of those newscasters who are dedicated to their work are sent away to other areas, in some cases off the air completely, unquote. A spokesman said the U.S. command would have no immediate comment. He said the command was attempting to determine exactly what was said, 
and that a statement probably would be made later. The night before that newscast, correspondent Frank Mariano talked with Lawrence shortly after Lawrence finished his blast. Bob, why did you do what you did tonight? Well, I've been here for six months in the news department, and I've seen uh, the news being suppressed. I've seen it being censored from uh, all levels in our department. I've been told by our officers in MACV and the MACV office of information whom we're directly responsible to has told us to not use certain films and not use certain stories on the air. And I feel like that um, after the Mike Maxwell incident, if you're familiar with that, that he charged AFN with uh, that censorship. It was time to say something. Mac V had an investigation of Mac V, and they suggested we would be, be, be replaced by uh, competent military personnel, which are the NCOs. And did any one thing kick this thing off? You did a youth performance uh, coup tonight by doing this on the air. What was the reason for that? Most recently, Rick Frederickson has been told that he was going up country. Rick is a very dedicated broadcaster, and I felt like that uh, it was just too bad that he couldn't remain here. He only has two and a half months in country, and they're sending him out to Hontray Island for the detachment. And Rick and I work very close together. And the front office has felt like that uh, Rick and I have been working together late, and we're planning the news possibly. So this is, uh, and then a week ago, uh, Hugh Morgan uh, was sent to uh, one of our detachments. And he was told that uh, he had made a statement concerning Vice President Agnew and introducing an Eric Semerai commentary. And that um, he was going up country for that interview when we know very well that he interviewed Barry Goldwater and asked Barry Goldwater how he felt about the war. And Barry Goldwater, of course, told it like it was. And uh, the interview received unfavorable comments from Mac O'Reilly. And Captain Williams, who's our OIC, told... Um, told me the other day that Hugh Morgan had left us because Mac B had requested he be taken off the air, and he is off the air at, uh, as a detachment he's at now. Bob, are you telling it like it is? I mean, have you been telling it like it has been when you've been newscasting on AFBN here in Saigon? I say I've tried to tell it like it is. I've been in hot water in and out of it for uh, putting certain films on and for saying certain things that I did. In your opinion, Bob, is there censorship uh, going on at Armed Forces Vietnam Network here in Vietnam? Well, I, I feel that uh, when they tell you not to use particular items, that that's censorship as far as I'm concerned. As of now, Lawrence is under suspension from his job, along with Corporal Thomas Sinkovitz, a sportscaster, who allegedly went along with Lawrence's comment on the air. Lawrence is also now in hot water for allegedly refusing to obey a sergeant's order last December. Lawrence has decided to stand court-martial for that instead of accepting company punishment.